it's been uh, it's been five years since I've been a teacher, coach, facilitator, or various versions of that word because I really don't feel like you can really peg it on one. But yeah, it's been about five years uh, since my first ever class. I've been a trainer at Warhorse for the past three, four years. Four years. I've been teaching for the last four to five years. I'm guessing. Hi. Uh, I've been teaching for close to three and a half, uh, four years now. Uh, I've taught one year as a part-time teacher while I was still in college and then ever since I've been teaching three, for three years right now. Hmm. Weirdest question. It's the weirdest question a student has ever asked me. Uh, weird has a lot, lot of lot of meaning, right? Weirdest question that somebody's ever asked me is if I am related to Kannan Gill because apparently I speak like him, which is weird because a I don't think I do, and secondly, from what angle would I be related to Kannan Gill? Well, might be that uh, we were once discussing uh, about you know the basics of philosophy and what philosophers discuss and somewhere somebody mentioned something about the nature of reality and then a kid looked at me and said sir how do we know you're real and then just stared at me for the rest of the class I that was quite weird definitely I, I started to question myself a little bit over there pass um, in one session we were having a debate about bodily autonomy and the student had a question where the student was like Hmm, do people have physical relationships with others who they do not love? So at one point in time, we were in class getting students to write a story, a futuristic story. And one of these uh, students came to me and asked me, Sir, is it okay if I write a story about uh, robots? I was like, of course, please go ahead. And then the student asked me, is it okay if I write a story about robots who are alcoholics? So there was this kid who asked me how old I was and I told him I was 24 and he did some mental calculation, looked at his friend and went, bro, sir, is the 90s kids. Which I think was really funny because the kid used both sir as a token of respect and kids in the same sentence, so which was pretty funny. There was this one time in session where we had a recess and uh, there was a bathroom and the student wanted to use the restroom but have ever thought there was a ghost inside the restroom and for the next 20 odd minutes all of us, because going to the restroom is an individual job uh, had to stand outside the door and give the student moral support so that he or she could do their thing To understand this kid asked Sir, if I powder some chalk and I throw it in my classmates lunch will he find out? Now, as an idea, it's hilarious, but I don't think he did it because I advised him not to. There's one time when a kid was unintentionally funny was when I asked him, uh, who killed Julius Caesar? And this kid with full confidence erupted and said, Bruce Lee. It, it, it would be an interesting movie to watch, definitely. One of the funniest things that kids have ever said to me is, uh, what happened to your face? <laughs> this was when I when I shaved my beard off and I went to class, um, one of the kids was extremely disappointed. Um, she was she was distraught because she was like, I can't focus, your face looks so bad right now. Please go change it. And I was like, okay. I, I get taken aback by a lot of things, dude. Kids these days are like growing up to be like super intelligent sometimes. They, they they stump you with a fact or a piece of trivia that you did not expect to hear from them. Uh, yes, I remember two instances very clearly. One was during a thought experiment where we told them there is a, a train coming down. You see the trolley from there, there's a trolley coming down. You can choose to switch gears and the train will, if you switch gears, the train will uh, kill one person. But if you don't, the train will keep fighting. So I asked the students, hey, uh, what would you do in this situation? One of them said, sir, I will not do anything. I'll let the train kill the five people. And I asked uh, that child, why? And he replied, well, the more the merrier. And I was like, this is, I, 
this is exactly how I felt. I was speechless. I was like, this is not an attitude that I expected in class. Yes, it was one of my early classes and a child asked me what homosexuality meant and um, it was an interesting moment for me because it was like a defining moment as a teacher and I remember uh, my example was some people enjoy pineapple on their pizza, some people don't and it's a personal choice and you, you decide what you want and what kind of pizza you want and I think the, the kid understood what I was talking about and they were quite young so uh, it, was, it was an interesting analogy that I gave them. So we were talking about gender roles and gender equality in a session and the student just raised his hand and wanted to share something and just got up and started talking about how his mum yells at his dad every single day for being lazy at home and I had to maintain a straight face the entire time and not laugh. There was this one kid who uh, we were discussing about what it takes to run a society, what it takes to run a family, what it takes to live a life and how much it might cost for you to get food and all of that, why the government should uh, be involved in economics so that people can get their needs taken care of and after listening to all of this a kid looked at me straight in the face and said sir living's just too expensive said, wow it's 9 a.m. in the morning I did not want to hear that one of the classes that I've gone I was early classes so I bought a water bottle in my class and this child asked me sir uh, why are you buying a water bottle uh, every other class you should just consider getting a water bottle from home and for me personally that hit home because I didn't realize that this small action of mine was, uh, was having the ramifications that I saw sometimes the early pull through. Oh, I miss high five them. That's my, one of my favorite things to do as a teacher is give a child a high five because it really gives them that support and that, and that validation and, and, and positive reinforcement for anything that they've done. The fact that you've, you had this sense of control, right? I mean, as a teacher, whenever you felt, like you got the sense that somebody was zoning out, you know, they would speak to somebody else and they would be, all of that would be audible. Whereas now everything is online, you can't hear them. You're just looking directly into the camera and you're, you know, taking your class and you're hoping that they're listening to you. I definitely miss the non-session part of class where there are recesses and breaks and students are usually very open and non-hesitant and they share a lot of things and that's, that's kind of beautiful. I think it's the dynamic that you shared with students, right? Like in an offline classroom, you had a dynamic where you were able to interact with them a lot more comfortably and they were able to respond to your questions a lot more easier which this entire discussion aspect is completely missing in these Zoom classes. Being in a classroom gives you uh, a sense of purpose when you're teaching class and I think I miss that the most because now I, I can't express myself as much, I can't be as communicative as I want to because my body language is obviously restricted. But those are things I miss about offline class.